Welcome to part three of the Laura Wan with STM32 Getting Started series. My name is Joe Tiarina, Applications Engineer for ST Microelectronics, and in this video, I'll demonstrate how to set up the WO Nucleo board as a Class A Laura Wan EndNode device and connect it to the ThinkStack network server. This is a continuation of the preceding part two video of the series, so please make sure to watch that if you haven't already. At this point, I have my WO Nucleo board handy. Previously, in part 1, I mentioned that the end device firmware was included in the Cube WOL firmware package, so I'll go to the LoRaWAN EndNote project and open it with Cube IDE. The first thing that I need to set up is the device EOI for my EndNote. I have two options for this. Option one is to use the device EUI that is automatically created from the UID64 register. Or option two, use a static device EUI that I can manually set from the LoRaWAN device EUI pound define. For this demonstration, I'll use option one. So I'll leave the static device EUI set to zero. I'll go ahead and find and open the files that I'll be talking about now, which are seidentity.h, and laura underscore app dot h. Again, no changes are needed in seidentity dot h. With this option, the program creates the device EUI automatically in get unique ID. The get unique ID is a simple function that reads the UID sixty four register and creates the device EUI from it. This is the breakdown of how the device EUI is created. Taking my board's eight byte address as an example. The first three bytes are the company ID for ST Microelectronics. The fourth byte is the device ID code for the STM32WL. And the last four bytes represent a 32-bit unique device number that is sequential and different for each individual device. This is what makes the address unique. From LoraApp.h, I have to change the active region pound defined to US915. And this is an optional step, but I still recommend doing it. From sysconf.h, change pound defined debugger on to one in order to enable the debugger so I can run the program within a debug session if needed. Once all changes have been implemented, I'll make sure to save all files that were modified, then build the project by clicking the hammer icon. And the build should complete with zero errors. Now I'll connect the WO Nucleo board to my PC so I can load the program on it and start a debug session. Once in a debug session, I'll hold from running the program for now. I'll run it after I have registered my end device on the ThinkStack network server. From the ThinkStack console, I'll click on Applications, then click on Add Application. Once in this page, I'll be prompted for a unique application ID, which I'll enter. The application name and description are optional. Once finished, I'll click the Add Application button. From here, I'll click on the Add End Device to register my device. From the Registration page, I'll select the Manual Registration option. I'll leave the activation mode set to OTAA, set the LoRaWAN version ID to Mac version 1.0.3, and click Start. Then I'll enter the end device ID, the app UI, which must match the one specified in the WL firmware in seidentity.h, the dev EY, which I can read from the sticker on the WO Nucleo board, this is the same that is extracted from the UID64 register I mentioned earlier. I'll click on the network layer settings to proceed. I'll set the frequency plan to US902 to 928 MHz FSB2. Finally, I'll set the network key. In this case, I'll just use the default one defined in the device firmware in sceidentity.h. And click Add End Device. 
my end device is now registered with the network server. So I can proceed to run the end device firmware and see it join the network. But before that, I'm going to connect the WO Nucleo board to a serial terminal to see what's happening. At this point, the WO Nucleo board should be enumerated as a virtual COM port on my Windows PC. From Windows Device Manager, it should show up like this. Take a note of the COM port number assigned and select this from TerraTerm. Then configure the serial port as shown with the baud rate set to 115200, data set to 8 bits, parity none, stop bits 1, and no flow control. Select auto for the new line receive option. Now I can go back to my code project that I left stalled at the beginning of main and run by clicking the run button. From the serial terminal log window, I can see that the end node device boots up and that it joins the network successfully. The LoRaWAN EndNode firmware is set up to transmit a data payload every 10 seconds, and I can see these uplink packets received on the network server console. If I look under data, I can see a log of the packets being received from there. This payload sent by the EndNode actually contains dummy pressure, temperature, and humidity data. An upcoming video of this video series will demonstrate how to integrate and use our X-Nucleo IKS0183 Motion MEMS and Environmental Sensor Expansion Board so we can report real sensor data up to the network server. By protocol definition, a Class A LoRaWAN device can also handle receiving downlink data packets. The protocol specifies two available downlink slots after each uplink event that can be used to send data down to the end node. I can demonstrate the downlink feature by sending a downlink packet from the network server console to command the end node to blink an LED. Under messaging, in the downlink section, set the F port to 2 and send a payload of 01. This is the code to turn on the red LED3 on the nucleo board. I can then send a payload with 00, 0 to turn off the LED. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one where I demonstrate how to forward the data to an application server like my device's Cayenne to help visualize and manage the data received from the EndNode. Thanks for watching.